Now that we've got a basic understanding of how Spotlight works, let's put it to the test with a real-world example. Texturing a model from photographs is a very common task in 3D art. I'll show you how to get great results within ZBrush and Spotlight. For this, we're going to texture a head. So let's open up the tool menu here and grab the demo head. I need to drag it into the canvas and go into edit mode. I also want to change its material from this red wax to something that's white, something that doesn't have a color that comes along with the material, because I just want to see the poly painting that I'm going to be doing. Also, you can see the total number of polygons that are in this model right now. It's only 69,000. We want to have a lot more polygons to work with so that we can pick up as much detail as possible. Let's divide the geometry a few times. I'm going to go up to about 3 million. Uh, your computer might be able to handle one more subdivision, but that'll be good enough for now. Okay, let's position this head. We want it to be looking straight forward. So uh, let's hold down shift and make sure it's locked into a front view. And we'll just scale it up so we're seeing more of the face on screen. Now it's time to bring in our textures. Let's go into texture and we'll go to import and bring in the head front exercise image. Now that we got that in, let's click the texture palette again and go into spotlight mode. Just want to close lightbox to get that out of the way. And now we can reposition this photograph so it's more directly over the head. So I might want to rotate and scale a little bit to get this lined up. Let's see, this wheel is just getting in the way right now, so uh, I'm going to move that off to the side. And let's see, the mouth is pretty close, nose is pretty close, eyes is pretty close. I just want to use the nudge tool, it's this one right here, and we can use this to push around the different pixels in the image so that they match up closer to the model. So we've got the draw size, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so we can make more dramatic changes. And so with the nudge tool active, we can just kind of push around uh, parts of this image to get it lined up. And it looks like the jaw could come out a little bit wider. doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. There's always opportunities to uh, fix things up and uh, correct mistakes. Something else I might want to do is get the draw size a little bit smaller so I have finer control over this. I also want to tweak the nose. Looks like the corners of the nose are a little bit wider in the photograph than they are in the model. I'll just push those in. And also try to bring the hair up a little bit more. Looks like the model's got a lot bigger of a, a mass of hair. Now every once in a while you might be noticing these white pixels in the image. That's a little bug with Spotlight and it kind of makes things difficult because you have to repaint those areas. It's not going to make for a very clean transfer. So I'll have to repaint those areas to cover up that area, but otherwise this should work fine. Okay, so once you've got the image situated, we're ready to start transferring this to the, the model. So one thing I want to do is make sure we're seeing a nice preview of what we're going to be painting. So you can just click and drag on this little icon and scale up your preview. That's about good. Now you just hit Z to go into poly painting mode. So you see you've got a nice little preview of what's going to be painted on the model. Um, I've got symmetry on right now, but actually I don't want that on because the photograph is not symmetrical and I don't want the textures to be symmetrical either. Now you can just simply click and drag and it's going to brush on the model. Now you notice I forgot to put it into poly paint mode, so I'm just going to hit Control Z to undo that. Make sure you turn on RGB and turn off Z Add. Very common mistake. I do it all the time. So one thing you might be noticing is the eyeballs are not being textured. That's because the eyeballs are a separate subtool. Any kind of poly painting affects only the active subtool. Now the, uh, the hair isn't totally covering the model, but that's okay. We can uh, fix that up from other views. And we're also getting that, like I was talking about before, those weird white pixels. We can deal with those later. Right now I just want to get something covering up everything that we can see right now, just to have a base to start working with. Okay, let's take a look around the model and see what's happened. Most of the front of the face looks pretty good, but we do have some weird things happening. For example, the sides of the face 
are really only picking up any texture information from a very glancing, shallow angle. And so it's resulting in a lot of stretch and things aren't quite accurate. That's okay, we can pick up a lot of this detail from side photographs. Something else to look at is, in the photograph, the nostrils weren't quite positioned where the nostrils of the photograph were. So we can clean that up easily. I just want to position the model so uh, we can see those spots nice and clearly. And then I'm going to turn on Z so we can turn on the spotlight again. And I just want to position this photograph so that just some neutral skin tones are right here where those spots are showing up. And now I can hit Z again. And what I want to do is just drop my brush size down so we can come in and just paint out those areas. Something else I might want to do actually is turn down the RGB intensity. You can see that that painting is kind of creating a, a harsh line around it. I just want to bring down the intensity so we can paint a more gradual fall off. So I'm just going to undo that painting that I did and just paint with a, a lower intensity so that we don't see that brush stroke quite so obviously. All right, well, I think we're ready to start projecting from the side. So you just want to move the model around. I'm going to hold down shift so we can lock in a side view. Okay, it's locked in. Move the image roughly to the center and hit Z to bring back the spotlight. Now we want to bring in a different photograph right now, so I'm just going to hit X to close out of this. We'll go into texture and import the other exercise file. And we just want to load that up in spotlight now. And just like we did before, we're going to try to position this over the model. Rotate is going to come in handy here. I'm going to move this off to the side because it's just getting in the way. See, the scale's looking pretty good. The only issue, it looks like there's just some parts of the face that aren't quite lining up. So as before, we can go into nudge mode. And let's see, my draw size needs to be much bigger. And I'm just going to work this into position. Something else I might want to tweak is the brow. Make sure that my uh, photograph is lining up nicely with that. It actually helps if the photograph is slightly larger than the model, just to make sure that you're going to get full coverage. And it looks like my lips might need to come out a little bit farther just to, to meet up with the model. I'm also going to pull the hair out a little bit, so make sure we get full coverage on that. Whoops, that was not what we wanted. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. Actually, Control Z does not work on the positioning of the image over the model, so I'm going to have to reposition that manually, actually. Looks like we've got some of those stray white pixels again. We'll just have to deal with those manually. All right, well, that's pretty close. Let's take this into polypainting mode. Just going to hit Z. And one thing you might notice is if I just rotate here, um, we want to turn on symmetry now so that we're painting on both sides of the head at the same time. So I'm just going to rotate that back, holding down Shift to lock it back into place. Now you notice it's really faint. I forgot to bring RGB intensity back up to 100. So now we're going to get the full effect. Now one thing you want to be careful about is not brushing the side view too close to the front of the face. The reason for that is if I start brushing over here on the front of the face, we're going to get that same texture stretching that we were doing before on the side, but it'll be on the front where we've already got a nice result and we don't want to mess with it. I'm going to shrink the brush size down a little bit so we can have a more fine-tuned edit right here. All right, let's see what this looks like. So that's pretty close. There's a little bit of uh, tweaking and fixing up we can do. Well, let's fix some of these things up on the head, especially in the back of the head. One little trick here is to position some of this hair so that we can paint hair from the side of the head sort of onto the back. And hair is this kind of messy, organic thing anyway, so nobody is really going to notice that we're pulling hair from the wrong place and putting it on a different place. You also might want to turn off symmetry when you're working on a place that's right next to the center line of your model, because it'll be really obvious if the hairs are exactly the same two halves that are close to each other. And 
it might take some back and forth so you can find just the right part of the photograph to paint on just the right part of the model. I also want to rotate the model at a few different angles just so I can get a, uh, a different view on it. So I want to clean up this little bald spot here on the back. So I'm just going to bring in this photograph over this area too. And just as always, you just paint out those bald spots and those errors and those little weird things that happen. So I could continue doing this all day, but you get the idea. Let's get a view of the model from the front side. So now that we've got lots of nice poly painting in this model, we could export this as a texture map, for example, and use it in games. When you're all done, you can hit Z to go back into the spotlight and just click the X here to make sure you're closed out of it. This method of texturing models is used all the time in the film and video game industries. It's fast and can result in really high quality textures.